This title is total clickbait, but I am not ashamed to admit it. Obviously, I'm going to disagree and tune in to find out why. Before we get started, my name is Mark. I am a doctor of physical therapy and snowboard instructor at Mount Bachelor in Bend, Oregon, along with my wife, Sarah, who is a health teacher, yoga instructor, personal trainer, etc. And we do all of this for snowboarders like yourself because we love it and we wanna keep you riding until you are 70 plus years old. Before we dive into the nuances on why strength training, mobility training, aerobic training is so important for snowboarding and how it can benefit you, I want to reiterate that nothing can actually replace snowboarding itself, just like nothing can replace your activity or sport itself. But we train the best we can off the mountain. We try to emulate and repeat situations, stress our bodies in ways. So when you are in your sport, on the mountain, in action, it's not a new sensation, not a new movement pattern, and not a new stress. Secondly, I always recommend to keep it simple. So we all usually know what to do, what's going to benefit us, what's going to be the best plan, but what is gonna be the simplest, um, most efficient way for you to be and stay active? All right, so we all have grand aspirations to do the greatest movement, the greatest program, and the greatest routine, but if it doesn't get you or motivate you to stay active, What's the point? So what is strength training? You often hear it, but what is it? Strength training in general can be defined as moving in some sort of movement pattern with or without resistance. You have calisthenic athletes that move with just the body weight, moving against gravity. Uh, but then you also have weight trainers, bodybuilders, for example, that use resistance to build muscle. So that's the simplest definition. So what is the point of strength training? The ultimate goal being muscle hypertrophy and tensile strength. Muscle hypertrophy being if you lift a weight, uh, damages the muscle fibers, the muscle fibers repair themselves, grow back a little bit bigger, a little bit stronger. On the other side of that, the soft tissues for ligaments and tendons tend to get stronger based on the type of movement that we're doing in preparation for the activity. Another reason is stress. What is stress? It's not just stressing over an exam the next day, stressing over a work deadline. Stress comes in a variety of ways. In regards to strength training, stress uh, refers to stressing the joint, the soft tissue in a way that's going to prepare you uh, for that movement in the future. So, for example, if I train in a way uh, to push off the ground uh, with, with a certain amount of force, my body's going to adapt grow in a way that is prepared to do that. So for example, if I push uh, in the gym and then I push in the snow, uh, my body is prepped and ready to handle those forces. Another example might be if I'm carving in a dynamic way on a snowboard, um, that's putting a lot of stress on the joints, on the tissues, on the tendons, ligaments. Can it handle that amount of force and abrupt deceleration? Ultimately, we all want to stay injury free. Of course, it is impossible to fully prevent injuries, but like I always say, we can reduce that number. So if you have a certain amount of risk, you can put a reduction in that risk when you train properly. Now there are things that are totally and completely out of your control. A child runs, comes out of the woods, uh, gets in your way, someone falls in front of you, et cetera, et cetera. You catch an edge on accident. There are certain things that are totally out of your control, but if your body is robust, if your body is prepared to handle those stressors and those forces, we're good. So simply strength training is not enough. One of the terms you will hear very often is progressive overload or variation. Essentially, the body is so adaptable that if I lifted a or did a bicep curl with five pounds for weeks on end, my body would get used to this, it would adapt, it would grow, and it would get used to this force. So what we need to do, we need to add weight to that, we need to change the intensity, switch something up so it shocks the system, so to speak, so it allows our body to continue repairing itself, growing bigger, faster, and stronger. So ideally, we want to mirror our sport. So for example, a gymnast is not going to train us the same way a lineman uh, in American football trains. A soccer player, football player, um, you know, in Europe or America is not going to train the same as an equestrian rider. 
Of course, there is crossover in uh, movement patterns and biomechanics, but in general, we want to train in a very specific way to get prepared for our sport. Snowboarding is very intense. It requires a lot from our body and our mind. So we want to make sure that we are fully prepared to excel with this incredible sport. Lastly, with snowboarding, for anyone who has been doing this for a long time, you've probably noticed a culture change in the sport in general. It's not a bad thing. You just have athletes that are getting older. They want to keep doing what they love that they've been doing since they were children. Uh, and the only way to do that is to continue training and stressing their body in a way to get them on and off the hill and be able to go to work the next day. The unfortunate reality for all of us is we all get older. Now with age, we tend to move a little bit slower. Uh, our bodies repair themselves uh, a little bit less and a little bit slower on that timeline. And generally we want our bodies to get primed before we are super active. It's not the same as an 18 year old versus a 50 or 60 year old. Mobility and flexibility, some of our favorite buzzwords. Huh. So for anyone who continues to have a mobility or flexibility plan, whether that's yoga or uh, animalistic movements, mobility based movements, um, you probably love them. It makes you feel good and that is fantastic. But what's the point? What does it do? If you've seen another video that I've put out, there's a lot of studies that contradict one another. Some say mobility flexibility works. Others say there's no evidence behind this. You don't really need it. Ultimately, what feels good to you? I know as I approach nearly 40 years old, I like the feeling of a mobility and flexibility plan. The idea being with mobility to stress our joints in a variety of ranges under a tensile load. What does that mean? So if I want to drop down into a deep squat with resistance, um, I'm strengthening my joints, I'm strengthening the tissues, the ligaments, the tendons with that, but I'm allowing that joint to be as mobile as possible, handle that force, that stress uh, under a load. So let's say I'm jumping off of a, a feature on the mountain on a snowboard, I land a little wonky, you know, my chin touches my knee, am I going to be able to ride out of that? Maybe. Um, ideally, so I want to make sure that I can handle that force off the mountain. One term you will often see physios use is motion is lotion. That could not be more true, especially with joints that use synovial fluid, pumping the good nutrients in, removing the toxins and the, uh, the bad stuff, so to speak, out. Um, but the more you move, the more fluid, ideally, the joints will be. So trying to stay as mobile and flexible as possible will help. Aerobic exercise, my personal favorite and arguably the most underrated uh, exercise with snowboarders. Um, I don't see it very often and I always uh, program this for my athletes. Essentially aerobic uh, would mean getting your heart rate up uh, in variable rates. So it could be something as simple as a walk jog, um, walking on an incline. Ideally it would include some sort of sprint uh, feature in there. Um, and multi-directional uh, agility training. So that's the goal, you know, with snowboarding, we're moving uh, upwards of, you know, very fast, 20 miles per hour uh, or more sometimes. Down a hill, we're stopping on a dime, you know, digging that edge in, moving tightly in closed uh, dynamic turns. That's a lot of acceleration, that's a lot of deceleration. So knowing where your body is in space, are you in the most efficient for, uh, position as possible? Being efficient, you know, adding up over a period of hours throughout the day, multiple days in a row if you're on vacation, can take a toll on your body. Lastly, plyometrics. I don't see it enough, and it's oh so important. Like I always say, if you jump on the mountain, you should jump off the mountain. Most people will stop jumping after high school or even college. You know, there's really no reason unless you're playing with your kids, but not everyone has kids. So why not implement that in your training? So plyometrics, what's the point? They became popularized 20-ish years ago uh, or more. Essentially the goal being to uh, strengthen our soft tissues, tendons, ligaments, um, to handle those forces. There's a lot of force, let's say, for example, in your Achilles when you uh, perform a simple jump. A lot of force going in and out uh, moving up through the muscle and that contraction. So we want to make sure that the, the tendons and the, the ligaments and the tissues can handle those forces properly. It's great for injury prevention. It's great for an aerobic routine to get your heart rate uh, variable in different ranges. Um, and ultimately, 
it's good for you. Wrapping up, what's the point of all of this? So obviously, as you can tell, I am 100% behind training uh, for snowboarding off the mountain. So what can it do for you? Well, for one, you can progress on the snowboard. If I can move a little bit easier, if I don't have to worry about muscle contraction or my range, mobility or flexibility, if you've ever seen a professional grab their snowboard in a way that you tilt your head and wonder how they did that, uh, most likely they're young, uh, they have that ability, um, so why not give yourself that ability as well? Second, injury prevention. Like I said, it's 100% possible to prevent injury, but we can reduce that risk. So why not take that chance, train a little bit off the mountain and potentially reduce that risk and get out of the sticky situation. Third, last longer on the mountain. I'm sure many of you have experienced being tired on the hill, never call last run. It's because snowboarding takes a lot out of the system. So who wouldn't want to last longer on the mountain? Training is not just going to benefit you on the mountain. Training is going to benefit you in your day-to-day -day life, which arguably is a majority of your time. So why not improve your life while also improving your time on the mountain? Easy decision. Lastly, flow. We are always chasing that presence. Presence is the, is the one thing that um, we as humans can probably relate on besides getting old. People chase presence and what that what does that mean? It means when you're on a snowboard on the mountain, you're chasing that feeling of being fully aware um, in the moment, you know, having to make split second decisions, uh, you know, two moves ahead. Um, it's the reason surfers love surfing. It's the reason race car drivers love racing. It's the adrenaline that people chase because you can put your problems aside and you can be present in the moment. You know, that's what everyone is seeking. So. I'm not going to promise you that training off the hill is going to bring that, but I promise you if you're worrying less about how your body is going to handle it, you'll probably reach that point eventually. If any of this resonated with you, that's awesome. That was the ultimate goal here. Obviously, we have programs. You can check out our Shred program, 12-week workout. We have a bodyweight workout we just released. We have our Snoga membership, which is yoga for snowboarders, and a bunch of other things. Um, if you feel like you just need to get started, keep it simple. Start with a couple basic movements and just get them consistent day by day up to the season start and during. Obviously, that's going to change while you're in season, but the point being, get started, stay started, and I promise you will see the results. Thank you so much for joining me, for listening to my rambling. Obviously, I talk a lot, um, but hopefully I was able to provide some insight, some education on the reasons why. Uh, you should at least get started if you're already started training. Fantastic. You're ahead of the game. Um, and I will keep uh, preaching uh, the benefits of strength training, mobility training, aerobic, plyometrics, all that great stuff. Until next time, I will see you all. Thanks again for joining me. Bye-bye.